Hey guys, it's going to Gentleman again and welcome back to my channel. So first of all, thank you again for joining the channel. I really appreciate your time. I also wanted to ask you, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, to please do so by just clicking on the button below and hitting subscribe because it's really going to help me in bringing you a lot more content. Today I'm really excited because I'm going to do another AR video with Magic Leap. In this case, we're going to be extending the functionality that I created previously to grab items, but instead doing a selectable functionality. So we're gonna be adding two different states. One is going to be a hover state, and the other one is gonna be the actual selecting state. So let's jump into Unity and start working on it. All right, guys, so let me show you what I'm gonna be doing today, which is to extend the implementation that we did previously. And in that video was basically to walk you through how to implement a grabbable object and also a grabber, which is actually the controller that is grabbing the object. So I show you how these things work previously. You basically have different type of objects that we're grabbing. We have objects that have no gravity. We have objects that have gravity. We also have a gravity chain that we can use to grab multiple objects. And then basically the chain uses physics to, to connect to all these other sub objects. So, and then last one, this is an object that is in motion and we basically when we try to grab it, it stops the motion, and when we let go, it continues the, the rotation. So what I wanna do is, not all the time in, in experiences, we want to grab items, but we may want to hover over items. And, and when I say hover, I'm, I'm thinking, you know, having the control touch another item and then change the state of that item. So what I'm thinking of doing is also implementing a selectable script and the selectable script is going to be used by the so the grabber is going to be the controller we're still going to use that i don't think we need to change that but the selectable script is just going to be one that changes the state of the object that has been selected and then i'm also going to show you how we can toggle the material based on the selection and and then if we have time at the end we might do a unity action basically a callback when we when we do a selection so Let's go ahead and, and get going. So I'm going to be cloning and extending one of the scripts. So the one that I want to change is just, cause I, I just been thinking about this. I'm, I'm like in every video, I'm experimenting. So I have a object that is already called grabber. And this is the one that I did previously and also the grabbable. So this one already knows when I'm holding the, when I'm basically holding the trigger key it knows that something is is being grabbed. So I think I can still use that because we're trying, we might not be trying to grab something, but we we could probably just rename this to something like is touching or or is in contact. So that is more generic. And because if we're, if we're selecting an object, we're basically not grabbing that object, we're just selecting it. So I could change this and we can name it something like let's go ahead and rename it so that it makes more sense so this could be is in contact in contact or i think that's fine i think is in contact is fine and then we can rename the public variable that we're using from the other script to determine if it's being grabbed to be to be also the same thing it's in contact i think that's going to work just fine so now this is more generic so now we have a script that is being used as a grabber but now he knows when he's when he wants to be in contact with another component. So in our case, if we are holding the trigger button, then we know that we we well we necessarily don't know that it's in contact. We just know that we're holding the trigger button. So let me let me think about the naming, which is which is making me think a little bit because I normally would be okay with names. But in this context, we need to name it correctly if it's going to be applied. For, for multiple things like, you know, the grabbable and selectable objects. So we could simply say it's triggered down. I think I think that's fine. Or is triggering or is, I think it's triggering since we're using, let's go ahead and do that. I'm in contact, it's, it's a name that I don't like as much because we might not be in contact with another, with another component until we actually collide with that other component. So that's what I'm having a hard time with that name. So let me go ahead and rename it. So this one is going to be is trigger. We can just say is trigger on. I think that's I think that's fine. 
and then it's going to be lowercase because this is going to be the private variable that we're using here and then the one that we're exposing i'm going to rename it to be e and it's actually is trigger on not in trigger on so let me just name this one and we'll rename the other one is trigger on excellent and then and if i make mistakes because it's 12.39 a.m. That's not excuse, but <laughs> I guess it's a good excuse right now. So, and then this one is gonna be is trigger on. Okay, so, so I think that, that works fine. And we still have everything that we need. And let me just test everything just to make sure that we're still, our game's still working. And this is what I was afraid of. Some things were gonna, were gonna break. So it's okay, we'll, we'll fix it. So if I go to the grabber, let me search for grabbing okay so it looks like it did it did work and we go to the grabbable that's where it's complaining and then it's trigger on okay so that should be okay and oh and it's not accessible let's see let me double click on it and i'll just say grabbing and it's complaining about grabber does not contain a definition for is grabbing on line 42, which is right here. Okay, so it looks like it just hasn't recompiled. So what I'm gonna do is close out of that and then let it compile. Looks like it is compiling now. And then go back to open C Sharp project and it should basically regenerate, regenerate the project. And it, we should be fine now. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit play. And we can see if everything is working. So I'm just gonna test the uh, the first control. And you can see that by by changing that now the it changed the variable in the inspector because that's the one that is being exposed. And that one is working fine. Let me just test the first one and the last one. I think I think I'm gonna call it call it as being good. And then that's working. So so we're good. So we, we didn't break anything. All right, let me just close this and just keep everything clean. So what I want to do is I want to create an object that is going to be just selectable. We don't need to we don't need to grab it. We need to just select it. So what I'm going to do is the grabbable object is the object that we're trying to grab. So I think I can clone this and duplicate it to be used for what we need. So I'm going to go back into the project and then the grabbable is now going to be called selectable. And let me just go ahead and double click this selectable. All right, and then I'll just double click to open it and then we're just gonna have to rename a couple of things. And let me just make sure I select the right one and double click to basically ping that tab. Selectable, all right. So it's gonna be the object that we're gonna be selecting. I I think I'm okay with keeping this as the, as the state text. Let's go ahead and rename it to be something more in line with what we're trying to, to do. So we can just say selectable state text. And this is the text that we use to display the state of this current item. So if something is selected, or if we are just simply, you know, colliding with that object, which in this case is gonna be like a hover, but it's not a hover. It's basically when we have, we are in touch with the object that we're trying to select, but we don't have the trigger button on. So I might wanna display a different color for that. But when we have the trigger button, we may want to change the the color and maybe do an action as well. So that's what I'm that's what I'm thinking of doing. So the other thing that I want to do is this is going to change. This is going to be selectable, selectable state. And then what I'll do here is we can just call this one selectable state text format. And that could also be a state text format if you want, and also a state text here. I'm just going to make it a little bit more verbose, but you're more than welcome to change it since this code is going to be available in GitHub. We don't need to use gravity in this case because we're, this is going to be for things that we want to select. So we don't really want to grab anything. So I think I'm going to leave that. I'm going to leave that out. I need to know about the object that is being, you know, that I'm, that I'm using to grab this object. So in our case, it's going to be the grabber. So I'm going to leave that. And then we don't need to really do anything with parenting an object or even using rigid body so we can just change that so this is going to have a couple of states so one is going to be so i'm thinking i'm thinking i'm going to call this one so just think of the hover as, as something that you're hovering on so the hover in this case is going to be like i said before 
if we're in contact with an object, we're going to have the hover. If we are triggering and also hovering, that's going to be when we're actually selecting something. So I'm just going to say hover and then so we're going to say hovering and then selecting. And I think this is going to be a private set because this is going to be set by this class. And then anybody from the outside, any other class is going to be able to read this value. So this is just for code uh, protection. Just make sure that nobody from outside can 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 change it. In our case, it's asked, but if you want to make this this you know more robust, or I think this is just a good practice to do things like this. Okay, so the away we don't really need because we're not using any of these. So just gonna remove the that method. And then the other thing that I want to do is we can say so we're not we're not really grabbing anything anymore, but we are selecting things and we're hovering over things. So we could we could change this to be something like hovering, and then based on the hovering and the state of the trigger the trigger property on the other control, that's how we're gonna know if we're actually selecting something. So I think this could be selecting. Or we can say, I think select is fine because it's going to be used for, for, for two things. So I'm just going to call it select. I'm also going to rename this. And then we do need an instance of the grabber. So that's what I'm doing right here is just getting the grabber instance back. I think that's fine. And then the other thing that I need to do is, so we're still going to do all this. I'm just going to, I'm going to remove most of this code right here. And then on the release, this is basically when we're releasing the trigger button. This is when I want to let go of the either the hover state or the select state. So I'm going to I'm going to keep this. This one is select, and then this is all fine. We don't need any of this. And I'm going to give you a code review once we once we get everything going. I'll explain it to you one more time, just to make sure that it makes sense and you can. You know, I, I want you to understand this really well before I move on. All right, so this is going to be the format because this is what's actually going to change the text on this state. So this is going to be replaced by this value here and then the color and the value are gonna be passed in. So if we're selecting, then we're basically gonna change it as green. If we're not selecting and we're letting go, we're gonna show it as red. And then we're also gonna show the value of on and then off. So this is all good to go. So now we need to look at two, two different things here. We need to know if we are in contact with the object and we also need to know if we have the trigger bound. So it could be one state could be on and the other one state could be off. So because we could be hovering but not selecting, but we could never be not hovering and, and, and selecting. So it's either this one or this one, or it could be this one by itself. So I'll explain that to you here and I'll show you how this is gonna work. And I haven't tested this, but I have it in my in my head on how it's going to work. So the way that this is going to work is, let's say that we want to select it, right? At this point, we, we might not have the, we might not have the object, the, the trigger button press. So in that case, we need to do a, a different check here. We need to say, Okay, so I want to know if the object that I'm colliding with, which in this case is going to be other, I want to get the component of it and make sure that it is the grabber, because that's the only object that we're going to be, that is going to be selecting this object. So that is going to be used to select this object. I think that's better, better set. So that's what I'm going to do is so I'm going to say, okay, I want to make sure that the object that is selecting me is, is of type grabber, which in our case is going to be the controller. And then I also want to make sure that the grabber is triggered on, is not set. This, is, this means that the person might have the controller in contact with the object that I'm selecting, but they haven't pressed the trigger button. So this is going to be the hover state. So in this is going to be, in this case, it's going to be hover, hovering equal true. So the other state that we could have is we can, we can probably have, you know, we will have the controller being in contact. So in this case, it's going to be, so I'm just going to do an L, an L, else if. If the grabber is not null and the grabber is on, this means that we are in contact with the object that I'm trying to grab and also they are pressing the trigger button. 
So in this case, we, we're selecting. So what, what's going to happen here is hovering is going to be false. And then what's going to happen with the with the selecting, this is going to become true. Awesome. So one other thing that I want to do here is I want to be able to, to see the state of these variables because I know by experience that I'm going to have bugs. It's not going to work the first time. And, and I know that for sure because, you know, I don't know for you guys, but for the most part, every time I write code, it doesn't work the first time. And when it works the first time, something else doesn't work. So, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to add a chain, a check here as well. And this check is just going to be, I want to see what the hovering value is, which we know is going to be true, but I also want to see it in these, basically in the state. So what I'm going to do here is I want to see the state here, but I also want to be able to, to look at other, other properties. So another property that we're going to be seeing as well is going to be, so this is going to be a little, a little long, but that's okay. So this one is going to be the hover, hovering. And then on the hovering, I want to know if, so we're using index zero, one, so the next one is going to be two. And I also want to know about the selecting state. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do n, and I'm doing backslash n because I don't want all of this to be in one line. It's going to get bc if I do that. This one is going to be selecting, and then we'll do the same thing. This is going to be index three because that's going to be the third value from zero index that is going to be that is going to be passed in. All right, so I think we're good. Zero, one, two, and three. It should be good. And then make sure that I type this correctly. All right, so then the next thing that I need to do here is I need to pass those variables. So the next one is going to be the hovering. And then I also need to pass in the selecting because I want to know what it is at that point. And we're going to be able to see that in the canvas when we run it in Magic Leap in the ML device. All right, so I think this is good, and then I'll do the same thing here. And I'm also going to do the same thing here. The other thing that we could do is we could just put this outside, and and I think this is fine if we just put it outside because it's going to apply regardless of the state. So that's what I'm going to do. That way we don't have to have this copy in multiple places. All right, and then the other thing that, I, that I'm noticing that we need to do here is I need to set this to false. Because just in case if we, you know, if we have it selected and we need to reset it, it needs to be reset. In this case, it's going to be hovering equal true because we're hovering, but we don't have the trigger on. And then that means the selecting is false. And then this is going to be just the reverse of that. Okay, so I think this is all good and that's good there. Then I'm just going to do the same thing that I did here, but I'll do it right here. Awesome. And then because we're releasing, we want to make sure that we're setting the variables to false. So I'm just going to say that hovering in this case is going to be false. And I'm also want to make sure that selecting is going to be false. Because at this point, we're not selecting anything. We're, we're basically releasing everything. So I think this is great because on release, what we're going to say if the reason why I have this is just in case we didn't, we didn't call the select. And that could happen if for some reason, we're still intersecting the other object and select never got called. So I want to make sure that I'm selecting the object. And then this is just making sure that the grabber object is not null and the trigger is not on anymore. So we want to basically reset everything to false. And then the last piece is just making sure that selectable state is set and then that we are showing the value hovering and selecting, which in this case is going to be false and false. All right, so I think that's everything that we need right now. So the other thing that we're going to need is I want to change the material. So for this example, I want to use, I'm going to use the same object, the leaper that we used before, but I want to change the material ba based on the state. So I'm going to have uh, basically a non-state, which is going to be when we're not hovering and when we're not selecting. I also want to have a state where we are hovering and we're not selecting. And I also want to have a state when we're selecting and we're not hovering and also is basically not set to none. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a couple of materials for that. So to add those materials, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create a couple of properties. So let's go ahead and do it right above this one since we have all the private properties there. So this one is going to be material 
and then I'm gonna say that the we can just call this one a we can just call it a non-state material. I think that's fine. And then what I'll do is I'll create one for the other two states. This one is gonna be the hover hover state, and then this one is gonna be the select state. We can also call this one hovering if you want to keep consistent, but I, I think I think I like those. And then what I'll do here is the I'm gonna move this one above this one because this is not serializable. So I want to keep everything together and clean. And okay, so I think this is good. I'm gonna make this one serializable just to expose it, and then also this one right here. All right, so I think that it's good. So now what we need to do is go ahead and create a couple of materials and we also need to set this based on the based on the selection. So what's going to happen is this script is going to be assigned to one of the leapers. So the leaper has a material already assigned to them. So let's go ahead and look at the leaper really quick before we keep going. So if you look at the leaper and we look at the inspector, we go ahead and select it here. Okay, everything compiled. So you can see that the leaper object has a flat Y. And, and that object is going to be, well, actually that's the object that is inside. The one that is outside, it's going to be the metallic shine, which is going to be the object that you see from the outside. I'm debating whether we use this component or not just yet. Let me just look at, I think that I think that's okay. What we can do is on the leaper, is on these objects is we can, in this case, I don't want to change because it's going to be really hard to see. So I think what I'm going to do for, for this example, instead of using the leaper, we're just going to create a sphere and then we can modify the sphere. That way we don't have to, I don't want to change the structure of this because this is used for the previous example. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new, a new object for that. So let's go ahead and do that. So on the, on this one right here, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create another table here where we're going to be having objects that we can create and we can experiment with that when we when we look at the device and then what I'll do is I'll move the ground here all together excellent and then I'll just go ahead and, and add a new game object this one is just going to be the cool thing about this is I could use multiple shapes and and then we can see how they change based on the shape that they are so this one is obviously huge so let me go ahead and do 0 0.1, 0 0.1, and 0.1. And I'm just going to create a little table here where we can walk to and then select different items. Okay, so I think this is good here. I'm just going to put that one. I'll probably put it right there. I think it's fine. I could probably put this one here. And then what I'll do is we also need a selectable. It's going to be the, the state of the... So I'm just going to copy this one and then just paste it right here and then this is going to be our label so I'm just going to change the, the location and also the location there so that we can see it right above it and then on this one obviously it's going to be select a state and then we don't need this extra information okay so I think that's going to work let me make sure that it's going to fit the the other so it's going to be hovering either false and then it's going to be selecting also false. So let me go ahead and I'm going to increment the size because I can see that that's not going to fit. So I'm going to change the size of this just a tiny bit more. There we go. So that should work. So now if I do three lines, yeah, three lines should work just fine. So I'm just going to change. Let's go ahead and select it and change it just a tiny bit. Something like that works. All right, select state off. And okay, so I think we're good there. So, and then I'm just gonna change this to be select. And it, it can, you know, it can be named whatever you prefer. I think that makes more sense. And then this is going to be, I'm just gonna call it selectable cube, just so that we know what it is. And then this is gonna be under the content. So I'm gonna move it up, because that's going to be under our content here. And then, let me just collapse the leaper as well. Okay, so that's gonna be one of the cubes that we're gonna be play with. And then what I'll do is I'll create, let me go ahead and clone that. And then we can just place, I'll probably just place one right here. And I'm gonna make this table just a tiny bit bigger. There we go. 
And then what I'll do is I'll just move this first one a little bit to the left. Excellent, I think that, that works perfect. And then let me go ahead and I'm just gonna change, let me move this out. I wanna change the size of this one. I wanna make that one much bigger because I wanna, I wanna show you how everything looks regardless of the size. And then I'll just put this back here. And then I'll just change it back to zero, zero, zero. Awesome, and then we can just move it up. Awesome, okay, so I think I, I think I like that. And then I'll just change the names here just to keep things clean. And this one as well, I think, I think that it's fine. All right, so this is gonna be that one, that one, and let's just create one more, which is going to be a different shape. So that one, I'm just gonna make it a sphere. And then we can just put the sphere, I can probably just put the sphere, just a really tiny little small sphere. And then let's just put it right, let me see. And I'll just move this one. Let me move this one back. Okay, so something like that. And then, it's one of the things about me is I try to make sure everything looks pretty even, even on a prototype. I wanna make sure things look good. All right, so I think, I think that works. And I like the size of it, okay. And then what I'll do, I'll just move it right over here. And then we can just say selectable sphere. And then I'm gonna copy the select state, move it inside, and then change the location. And then we can just move it up. And okay, so I think, I think that works. Perfect. And okay. Yeah, I think that works, I think that's perfect. So, so then the next thing that we need to do is I need to create a couple of materials because we're gonna need to associate these. So the first thing is, let's go ahead and create a couple of materials. So I'm gonna create three materials. And this one is gonna be the non material. And non material, no selectable material. There we go, see? So that if we add more examples, then we know exactly what we're, what we're talking about. This one is gonna be the hover hover material, hover selectable material. I think hover material is fine. And okay, so, and then let's just do one more. This last one, it's going to be the selectable material. I was gonna say selectable material. And let me just see non, on this one we can just say not selected. There we go, I think, I think that's fine. So for the default, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change the color. So first I'm gonna set it, let me just set it to all of them. And we can even do it this way here. And just make sure they all have it. And then we'll review them, make sure they all, okay. So that's gonna be the default material when they're not selected. But I wanna change the color, I think. I think I want this to come out a little bit more. So I'm gonna enable emission because I want this to really stand out from anything else. So we can say that when things are not selected, we're using a white color, a very, very bright color, which in our case is gonna be white. And then, and I'm also using emission because I want more of it coming out, especially for selecting states. Okay, so I think I'm good with that. So what I'm gonna do is, and then I need to assign that new script that we created. So I'm selecting all three of them, and then I'm going to assign it. And then now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set the non-selected material. No, stay, I'm having a hard time with that name, but okay, I think that's fine. And then let me expand this again, again, and then I'll just go ahead and assign the selectable state text. I'll do the same thing on each one of them. So it's gonna be the text that is gonna display this state. All right, so now we need, we're left with the hover state material and also the select state material. So we need to change, we need to change those because I, I want those ones to, to come out. So on the select state material or, or the hover state material, I'm going to select more, maybe like a yellow color. And then I can just apply it to one of them just to see. Okay, so I think I want it more, I want it to be, to stand out more. And then what I'll do, I'll enable emission there as well. And then we can do yellow, a very strong yellow. Okay, I like that a lot. So this is what I'm gonna use. And then let's go back into these three components and then just drag it and drop it into the hover. 
Okay, now let's do the last one, which is going to be the one that is one of the most important ones because this is when the when it's when it is selected. So on this one, I'm gonna make it a strong red. And it's gonna be similar to the red that you see on the leaper. And then I'm also going to enable emission. So I'm just gonna make it just very, very strong. And I think that works. And let me see how that looks. Yeah, I think that looks perfect. So that's what I'm gonna do. So now let's go back into these ones and then drag and drop that material. So I think we're good with materials. We, we're good with the structure. Now what I need to do is I want to make sure that we're selecting the appropriate material based on the state. So right now we're not doing any of that. So what I need to do is the, the first one that I know that we need to set is we want to set it back to what it was originally. So we're going to need something from, from these that is going to allow us to set the material. And that's going to be a, a very important component. So if we look at the, if we look at these components, so what we're going to need is we're going to need the mesh render. And, and that component has a, a reference to the material. So let's go ahead and add that. And we don't need to get it every time. We can just get it one time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, OK, so you know what? When you, when you initialize, I want to be able to get that component. So I'm just going to do this right here, render, renderer. OK, and I don't know if I spelled that correctly. I think I did. Yep, it looks fine. And I'll just set it to null to, to start with. Excellent. And then what I'll do is let's go ahead and bring back the awake method. So I'm just going to say awake. And we can just go ahead and. OK, perfect. And then I'll just say, OK, give me that component. So I'm just going to say get component and then mesh render. Excellent. So I know at the beginning it's not going to have, it's going to have the default material selected. But just in case, let's go ahead and set it again. Just in case something happened in the game and we never went back and, and set it back to the original material. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to say material. And then we can just say non-material. It's going to be the one that we set. So the other thing that I want to do is when we're done with and we're releasing the object, I want to set it back to the non state material. It's going to add spaces here. okay. And then a couple of things that we need to do here is we need to make sure that this material is the one that we're doing when, when we're hovering. So we're using the hover state material. And then the last piece is going to be the select material. And OK. So that's basically everything that we need to code right now. And so what I'm going to do before we build this to device, let's go ahead and get it tested through the editor. And that's one of the beauties about the setup that I have is we can test it without actually running on the device. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate this controller debugger. And we're going to put one right here. This is going to be the one that we're, that we're using to test the selecting states. And then we're just going to rename it. OK, so, so the next thing that I'll do is I think we have everything that we need. Let me make sure. I think I'm missing one thing. but. And I think this one is good. So we have a set to trigger. And OK. OK, so I think we're good. If not, we'll, we'll go through and, and make sure that we that we have it corrected. OK, so let me go ahead and hit play. And at least everything is compiling. So I think we're good to go there. And then let's go back into our scene. And then what, I, what I'm expecting here is to have this change. And it looks like it's not changing for some reason. So I'm going to have to fix that. And, and I think I know why. Oh, OK. It's because the, the, the sphere, the colliders that we assign to those materials need to be set to trigger. So if we look at the leaper here, and in fact, let me see. If we look at this material, this sphere, actually, I never made it. OK, so I see. I never made it as a trigger, but I did have a rigid body of kinematic. So what I'm going to do is on all of these ones, I'm going to set a rigid body. We're just going to set it to kinematic because I think that was one of the requirements that I had. So and then I'm just going to move this component up. And then I'll just copy that component. And then I'll also do the same thing on this one. We can move it up. And it's set to kinematics, meaning that it's not going to fall with physics. 
and then I'll do the same thing on this one, I'll reach your body, then move it up, excellent, and it's kinematic as well. All right, so let's test this one more time, and I'm sure we might be missing something else, but if not, I think everything should work, and then what I'll do here, you can see that everything is changing. So in this case, we are hovering. Let me see what's happening here. Because it did collide, but for some reason it didn't change the state. So if I go back, looks like it set the state and then nothing else happened. So so I think what's happening is we, we are in a hover state, but the trigger is not on. So let's see if the trigger works. So if I go here, so at least we know that the trigger is working. And so if I go out, I'm expecting that I'm expecting the state to change. Oh, okay, so the hovering state is changing. Now we're hovering. That's not quite working. So let me see why that is. Okay, so let's go back into the selectable object. And I'm going to check a couple of things here. So the first thing that I want to check is let me look at the triggers. Okay, so on trigger enter, we're selecting, we're calling this method. We're getting, we're getting a copy of the, basically of the instance grabber. If the grabber is not null, and we're not holding the trigger, we're not holding the trigger button, we're setting basically this, this, the hover state to true, and that's selecting to false. So, and then we're also checking, okay, if we're, if the grabber is not, is not null, and the trigger is on, then we're doing this. So I think the first thing that I wanna do is I wanna change, let's make sure that this state works before we move to the other state. So what I'm gonna do is, this is something that I normally do when things like this happen, is I'm gonna just comment out the other states, and then we're just gonna focus on this state. Okay, so let's go ahead and go back, and I'm gonna hit play, and I want to see if everything is working. I'm gonna clear the log, I'm gonna select my control, I'm gonna get in, and it looks like this is right now working because the selected state is the hovering is true, like select, selecting it false. So as long as we leave, nothing happens because we comment out that code. So we know that that part works. Then if we look in here now, what, what if the trigger is on? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set the trigger on. So now we're selecting and, and hovering is false. So I think everything as far as setting is working fine. So let me go ahead and hit play to stop it. So now I think something is happening here on the, on the other side when we are actually, you know, when we're actually releasing. So let me see what's happening here. So what we're saying here is if the grabber is not null and the grabber is, n the trigger is not on, then what I'm doing is I'm setting hovering equal false and also selecting equal false. And then, okay, so the first thing that I'm gonna do here is let's go ahead and select, let's let's go ahead and change the, just, just do the exit for now. And let's see what happens with that. I'm also gonna comment out this code just to make sure. Now we're just gonna look at the, the section beneath. So I'm just gonna hit play. And let's go back into our scene. And I think we have everything that we need. So the first thing that I wanna do is, okay, are those ones gonna reset? It looks like the hover state is gonna reset just fine. You can see it's changing to on. We're selecting it and then changing again. Let's see if it works the same on this other object. You can see that that's, that's all working. Okay, so I think that part is great. And then also this object is working. So what happens if I do the trigger on? Let's see if that works. Okay. So when I do the trigger on, for some reason it's not, see if I do that, that change, but then the, then, oh, okay, I see why. Because in reality, you know, in reality, what would, what would happen is okay I see what's happening I don't know that we need to check that the trigger is off because if we let go honestly we don't need to do that but this is what's causing it it's is that that variable is getting yeah I see I think I see what's happening so what I'm gonna do is in this case we really don't need to check for this because at this point if we're releasing we, we're not selecting anything so I think this is just a bug on our logic let me go ahead and test this one more time. So I'm gonna hit play, and then we're gonna check the state. So I'm gonna go back to scene, and then I'm gonna just 
just check the is trigger on and then you can see that, that that's working now so let's say that we don't have anything selected and you can see that that is working we're hovering we're not hovering we're hovering we're not hovering but if the trigger is on we know that we are selecting because it's in contact and also the trigger button is on so i think that's all working the other thing that i want to do is let's go ahead and uncomment this code just to make sure we didn't break anything okay excellent and let's go back and test it again and this is like i said the beauty about and this takes more time to to get a set up a thing like this but at the at the you know at the end it's going to be better because you can test it without having to wait for the device okay so we know hovering is working just fine let's test it with this other device this other component now when it's working let's go ahead and set trigger on so we are we are actually selecting not selecting and then we're also selecting here selecting here now if i do that hovering and then the same thing on this one so pretty happy with the results so what i'm going to do next is i'm going to go go ahead and get it built and show you how it looks in the magic lead device so let me go ahead and build it and then i'll show you the results so i'm going to go into build so this is going to be also the same grabbable scene so i normally create a new scene but i think in this case this could be incorporated into that same scene so if you're looking for this code, make sure that you go to GitHub and check it out and make sure that you're building this scene. So I think everything else in there works just fine. So I'm going to go ahead and build and run. Hit save. And yes, I want to replace my previous build. And then I can show you as soon as, soon as it's finished building. All right, guys. So let me show you what I have running on my device. So I'm going to show you a video that I took. I'm going to hit play. And this is the grabbable scene. I'm basically getting close to the objects that are that are selectable. You can see that I can do a hover. I can also, you know, go to the other cubes that are on the back as well as the one that I have in front of me. In this case, I'm doing a selecting, so I'm holding the trigger button. And you can see that the color is changing based on the materials that we set up through the video. And then everything else is working because the other components also have you know the grabbable object that i that i showed you previously so we just have a variety of you know of selections in this scene so let me just fast forward a little bit because the other ones are just the ones that you already saw i want to show you when i'm doing you know if i'm going really really fast how everything still works so in this case i'm i'm basically doing a selection but i'm doing it really really fast so everything is working it's just hovering over the objects and i'm also here just doing now a trigger and then just going in circles and then selecting so that's honestly everything that i wanted to show you guys and thank you very much for your time all right guys thank you very much for watching this video i really appreciate your time and if you have any questions please let me know in the comments also be sure to check out gamedev.net because they have amazing resources for game developers and also find me in patreon.com where i'm posting information about what i'm doing behind the scenes and also early access to source code thank you very much guys